Good morning and welcome to our time together in worship as we meet on this third Sunday of Advent. Let us open our time together in prayer. Let us meet with God whose spirit is with us now and throughout our daily lives. Let us pray for opportunities to share the blessings we receive, for God to provide the words with which we might speak them and inspire actions through which we might share them, that all might be drawn to the God we serve. Amen. We sing our first hymn on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist's Cry. Merrick will now bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk. Our reading today is taken from Luke chapter 3, reading from verses 7 to 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every true tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptised, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. As soldiers also asked him, And we, 
what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When you look over your life, can you think of a major change that you have experienced? You may have changed your career. You may have changed your diet in what you eat or in what you don't eat. You may have changed the exercise you take. You may have started running and now you're doing park run every Saturday morning. Or maybe you're just walking the dog more often. And you think to yourself, that was really hard going, but I'm glad I did it because I feel the benefit of that change in my life. And others who know me have said, yeah, we've noticed a difference. Well, in our Bible reading today, John the Baptist is telling us that we should not rely upon our religious pedigree. If you're a first century Palestinian, do not rely upon being an Israelite um, of the lineage of Abraham. To us, he's probably saying, do not rely upon your church membership. Instead, you need to rely upon the fruits of repentance, which all should be able to see. And you think, what fruits of repentance? And then he goes on to say, well, if you have too much, if you have a loss of clothes and a loss of food, why not share something of what you have with those who have less? If you are a tax collector, don't take more than you need to take. Don't cheat people. Only take what's owing to you. And if you are a soldier, don't use your rank or position to take advantage of people. But use your rank and position in a way of supporting people. So he's saying that the reform and the repentance in our life needs to be experienced and seen by those around us. Now, when we have taken on a new diet or taken on more exercise, we know that we have had to have a bit more self-discipline. We've needed to be a little more mindful of what we do. And that needs to be our approach to repentance and reforming our lives and in our Advent preparation. We need to be more conscious of what we are doing, whether it is in line with the direction that God is calling us in and the way we should be living our lives. We all like to hear the story of a reformed convict, somebody who has turned their life around, somebody who is now living their life on the right side of the tracks in society. Well, we all need to turn our life around and that is the point of Advent and that is why we listen to the reading about John the Baptist. Because repentance in our life needs to also lead to reform in how we consciously live our lives. So this, the fruit of repentance is seen as we live in the love of God for the love 
of our neighbour. Amen. We sing our next hymn, Like a Candle Flame. with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. O Lord our God, so many memories of people and places flash through our thinking as we move through Advent and prepare for Christmas. Many happy memories intertwined with sadness and loss. We pray today for those who have been part of our lives, our loving, our living, our growing and maturing. For those who have died, we give thanks. And for those who are living, we pray with gratitude that they may find comfort, love, purpose, joy, hope and meaning this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those families who suffered so much in recent storms, who lived without basic comforts of light and heat and warm food. For those who had to move house and leave their own home comforts. For those who stayed put and struggled to exist. For those who rallied round and helped and supported their local community in its hours of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For lives damaged, ruled, destroyed by illegal drugs. For those who supply, who run, who use. For those who pick up the pieces and catch the criminals and live forever with the consequences. For those who seek to help and to heal, to care, to love, to support and understand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For families suffering abuse and harm, neglect and cruelty, be they old or young, victim or perpetrator, may each of us look out for need, look out for signs and be brave enough to speak out and stand up and be counted. For medics, teachers, social workers and all on the front line of care, give them wisdom, insight and strength in the heat of the storm to do their very best for all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who feel the weight of illness and pain, of death and dying. For those impacted by Covid in all its forms, and those whose treatment for other conditions have been sidelined or at best delayed. For those who have prioritised and cho choose who has what care. 
for care deliverers and providers pushed into crisis by COVID and winter and increasing demand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves, that we may have eyes to see need, mouths to speak words of comfort, smiles to say, I love you, when hugs are out of bounds. May we, O God, be your eyes, your ears, your mouth to those who share this Advent with us, and those whose lives touch ours. May we be the bringers, the signs of good news to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These are our prayers for all your people. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to celebrate our birthdays, followed by this week's gallery. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Dear Lord, as we celebrate Judith's birthday, protect and guide her as she continues along the path you've prepared for her. Give her the courage to follow in your light and feel your love wherever she goes. Amen.
the news this week has been dominated by us moving to Plan B, where more restrictions are going to come into place over this winter time and of course the, the Christmas season. And so we are mindful of so many people who are going to be working to keep us all safe. But today I want us to especially be mindful in prayer of the scientists who very quietly work hard in the background so that they can keep us safe, so that they can keep the world safe by developing treatments and vaccines. So let us pray for our scientists. Lord, we thank you for the intelligence, the inquiry and learning of our scientists and all who are working around the clock developing vaccines for COVID-19. Please strengthen the bonds of closer cooperation and mutual learning and lead them to the healing of the nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing our next hymn, Lo He Comes on Clouds Descending.
Let us pray. Lord, help us to go into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast to that which is good, and to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, and honour everyone, and to love and serve the Lord. Be within us, and among us, and remain with us always. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us, and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>